Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a coffee and tea accessories, but mostly coffee store using Shopify. But don't worry, even if your store is in a different niche, this tutorial still applies. The steps work no matter what kind of site you're building. And if you don't have Shopify, by the way, don't worry about it. There's a link in the description that gives you three days to try completely free. After that, if you like it, you can keep it going for just a dollar a month for the next three months. All right, so here's how this is gonna go, bro chat show. So basically, first up, I'm gonna show you guys how to add products to your store. Then we're gonna organize them into categories or collections as they say in Shopify. And then we'll add those collections to our menu. And afterwards, we'll finally get around to customizing our site. It won't take as long as it seems, so just lock in. So first off, let's go to products right here and then click on add product. So first things first, we have our title. So that's easy enough to fill out. Down here is our description. So this is where you can write your own. Or if you need help, you can use this generate text tool and put some keywords, change the tone. And once you're satisfied, click on generate. If you're happy with it, keep it. Otherwise, generate again. For the media, this is where we place photos of our item down in the pricing that's simple enough to understand we input our price the compare price is simply the discounted price so if you wanted to drop this down to like 20 bucks then you can put 20 bucks over here and on your site it would show that it's on sale for the stock you input your quantity and then where it says continue selling when out of stock i would only check mark this box if you can actually fulfill your orders and restock in an ample amount of time Otherwise, check it off because people are going to order and you can't fulfill it and they're just not going to come back to your store knowing that you're not really reliable. OK, so keep that in mind for the variance. This is where you add extra facts about your items. So we have these category meta fields, which also help. So basically Shopify's AI looks at your photo, your description, your title, and then creates a couple of variants on its own. So we can use the color as well as the shape variants. However, we can also add our own. For example, if we had another option. So what is this? The how much you can hold the capacity. So go down here, create custom option capacity, and then we would put like 250 grams. And there you go. So that's kind of the long and short of it. Um, the only thing I want to talk about is the product organization. So when I talk about collections, we're going to see a smart option which is where we have like a value attributed to an item and collection. So basically, if I were to have my tag for all of my coffee cans, be can, for example, uh, basically what I would do is I would set up that collection and I would assign this item to that collection. But the thing about this is that it's not like it automatically assigns this item to that collection. We still have to manually do it. We just get to select what the value of this tag is, right? So personally, what I like to do is have my collection set up beforehand and I can just check off this box and it's going to be placed into this collection and I don't need to figure out values and all of that jibber jabber. So I'll go into more detail on that in a moment, but I just wanted to give you guys the heads up when I talk about that so you kind of know what I'm yammering on about. So with that taken care of, let's move on to our collections. Now, I'm just going to get rid of this one because we don't need it by just clicking on that and going to delete collection. All right, so now let's add this and first off, add a title. Easy enough for our description. It's not necessarily important for collections for the image. That is just the thumbnail of this collection. Now, this is what I was talking about a moment ago, manual and smart. So basically we have a value of any sort here and then we equal it to whatever. So this is for brewing essentials. So if I had like, a, let's say a coffee maker, that's how you spell coffee, coffee maker. Then anytime I had coffee maker in the title, it would assign it to this collection. However, either way, we got to assign it to the collection ourselves. So it doesn't make my life any easier. So let's just do it manually. We go to browse and then we add what we want to this collection. We hit add, save it. And there you go. That's really all there is to it. Following this, let's make our way down to contents and click on menus. So with our main menu, all we're going to do here is we're going to click on add menu item and go to search or paste link and head to our collections and simply select each collection so that they're transferred over to our menu. What we can also do with this is we can reorganize our menus by just clicking on these six dots 
right here and then placing them wherever we want them to be now as for everything else here i'm okay with it i just wanted to show you that you can also change the name of the menu if you'd like now as for the footer menu the process is the same you can add all of these things there if you'd want as well however uh, for my footer menus what i like to do is to include my policies and you just go to the same place and you find policies however we need to add the policies ourselves. so what we need to do is go down to settings and then all the way down to this page policies and simply click on your policies for out of the six policies that you have here they've got templates for you but just make sure that you input your own information this gives you an outline of what you need to add and how it should look just make sure that you double check that your information is there so with all of the nitty gritty taking well not all the nitty gritty we have some setting stuff to go over later on in the video but for now that is all we're going to touch upon in terms of the products and menus so what i want to do now is actually get into editing our store so let's go to customize i'm just going to open this up in a new tab so i can have easier access to our dashboard now let's get you guys familiarized with the shopify layout on the left hand side this is the structure of our store so we have the header with all of our menu items the content in the middle which is where we're going to find the products that we added and then we have the footer which is where our policies are now if you go to the right hand side we'll see the desktop version of our store which we are currently on the mobile version and then the full screen now this isn't exactly what the customer is going to see but this is pretty close to what they'll see when they come to your store and if you wanted to see like an exact version of what they'll see go to these three dots click on view and this will give you the best possible idea of what your store looks like to customers okay now what we can also do with our sections is move them around similar to what i just showed you showed you guys with the menu i can barely talk today so we just grab these six dots and rearrange them as such and we can also add sections by clicking on add section right here and then if we hover in between templates like this we can also add it this way as well so there's a couple of different ways to go about that with that being said let's dig in and get to customizing things so the first thing i want to change is the logo but i want to rearrange the setup here so what we'll do is we'll go to logo position right now it's on the middle left i want it to be in the top center <clears throat> and then we'll save that and then to add our logo what we need to do is we have to go to the theme settings gear on the left hand side click on logos and we can either like drag and drop our photos into here or we can go to the library and do it that way so we'll just take my logo place it over here and once it's downloaded we can just click on done and then it's going to appear on the left hand side right over here you can see that you can change the width of your logo now it just depends on how it actually appears on my store because there we go so yeah it has to be a little larger so we'll change that we'll make it a bit bigger and shopify is having some loading problems so we'll make it a little larger just because it looks a little too yeah there we go so that's noticeable enough and there you go so that's how you change your logo and also how you rearrange the position and layout of your header now let's go down to our banner image and change that so we'll head into our library and then go into my folder and find the picture that i need so here it is we'll take this oh that's not what i wanted to do at all so we'll take this try it again there we go that's what i wanted to do and we'll allow it to download and like we did a moment ago we'll click done so for this photo i want to make it smaller so we'll go to small here in the heights and then i'll make the animation some ambient movement so that it looks a little more interesting than just a static photo and as for the content here what i'll do is just click on it to change it and then i'll go to my clipboard and put my content there as for this button now the button is assigned to all of my products we can change it similar to what we did with the menu item actually we can just choose where we want it to be assigned to now as for the label you can change it from here but we'll leave it as is i think it's pretty good as it is here then uh we were already in the theme settings so let's go over there once more because uh, we have our colors so you're not really going to be going over here too much because if you want to change colors you can just click on any section go down to the color scheme and edit the scheme from within the only time you'd actually go to the left hand side is if you want to add another scheme but apart from that 
yeah, I really don't see why you'd be going there that often, but it's good to know at least. And lastly is the typography. So here we can change the font of our header text right here, as well as the body text. So what we'll do here is we'll go and change it to serif and make sure you click on select. Otherwise, if you exit out of it, it's not gonna save your changes. And so whenever I click on the logo here, just know that I'm trying to refresh the page because I'm not sure why it's not refreshing on its own. And then we'll go and do the same thing to this. So right now it's assistant, serif, select, and just, I wanna keep, I think, you know what I did wrong? I refreshed it before it did that little thing. So if we go down here, you'll see how this has changed. However, we gotta just do that one more time because I just, I'm not satisfied with it. It doesn't, doesn't really look too different, but you guys get the idea. So we'll leave it as is. It just feels like the, the font isn't quite what I want it to be. Let's try a mono. So we'll let it do its thing. We'll refresh it and you'll see how it changes. There we go. I just wanted to show you guys that it actually changes rather than, you know, making up stories over here. And then once we, there we go. Okay. That works. I am satisfied. Now for the featured products, we're going to, uh, right now it's actually a grid and I don't really like it being a grid because it takes up too much space on my homepage, particularly if I wanted to add more products right here, if I added the maximum amount of products, it just looks a little overwhelming, let's say, at least to me. So what we can do to mitigate this problem, at least in my opinion, we can go to carousel down here and toggle this on. And so now the customers can swipe through our items rather than have to scroll through them. So, I mean, it, I mean it's nothing. It not, it's not like it's gonna ruin their day, but for me, it my ADHD likes it, all right? But if we go to full screen, let me show you. There's this white space that is just, it looks kind of awkward. So to fix this, we'll go to full width products right here, toggle that on. And when we go to full screen, that has been resolved. And so, you know, you can work around things. You just gotta know how to do them properly. And that's why I'm here. So you guys know a little more information than you would off the get go. You can do a, a few more things here, actually. You can change the image ratio. So if you go to portrait, you'll see how it gets a little bigger, square, it looks the same as it was initially. And you can change the image shape to any of these options here, which is quite interesting. I mean, personally, I enjoy it being the default, but you know what, for this tutorial, I'll leave it at arch. Yeah, all right. And so there we go. Now, next thing we're gonna add is our collection list. So we didn't just spend like 15 minutes adding our products into our collections. We're gonna place the collection right above our featured products. And we're just gonna go over here. And now we have three collections. If we wanted to add a fourth column for a fourth collection, we'd go over here, add a fourth column, and then duplicate one of these. And then over here, we just put in the fourth one, but we don't need a fourth one. So we'll get rid of that and then just go back to three of these columns. Now we just click on the thumbnail. We go over here, click on the collection that we want to be in that place, and then just rinse and repeat. Pete. Up until now, we've kind of only been adding products and not enough context to our store. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, the first thing we'll have is underneath our collections, I'm going to add an image banner and I'm going to get rid of this. So just click on the buttons, remove it, and I'll also get rid of this as well through the same method. Now I'm going to add my own title and click on the content to get rid of the container, as you can see here, and just go up to the image one and head into my library to change the photo. Now we're gonna make the photo small and then we're gonna change the color of the font by going down to content, color scheme, scheme two. And we're just gonna make this a lot larger by clicking on the text. So that's something you guys gotta keep in mind. You can't change the color by clicking on the text heading, okay? And then we're gonna go over here to size and make it extra large. Then when we go to full screen, you'll see that it looks really nice. So we're gonna stick with that. Then underneath this, I'm gonna add an image with text section. So this one right here. Now we're gonna take the photo and it's a lot of the same stuff we've been doing up until now, adding photos, changing font, changing colors. So at this point, you kind of get into a rhythm. All that it takes is some creativity. So what I want to place over here is this item. And then for the title, let me just paste it from my clipboard, my trusty clipboard, one of the best things Microsoft has added in a long time. 
and then just clean up this blank space. Oh, there's some more. And we're gonna link this actually by going to paste a link or search and we're gonna find this item. So it should be at the top, there we go. Alphabet helps and then change the logo label. Check it out. Check it up, check it out. I gotta go to sleep, man. So to align this, we click on the background and then we head down to center alignment. And there you go. You have a bunch of other options here, but that's really all that you really need to know for now. So with the design part of the video taken care of, let's head to our dashboard here and go down to settings. So the first thing that I would recommend you guys to do is to buy a Shopify plan because that opens up so many doors for you, particularly when it comes to payments. So this is what you'll see in the payments tab when you don't have a plan. And this is what you'll see when you do. This is my other store that I have. And so all that you have to do from here is complete account setup. Now I can't show you this myself simply because there's some sensitive information that obviously I'm not gonna share with the world. So all you really do is just follow these four steps, fill in the fields, and once it's done, you're gonna be ready to start receiving orders and get money for them. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the shipping and delivery so that we can set up our shipping zones and the rates for those zones. So let's click on this first option right here. Now we have our domestic shipping zone. Right now it's free. We can add another rate to this or we can change this rate to be something else entirely. Maybe you wanna to ship to the United States or whatever, then you'd go down to markets. This applies to any country or region you wanna to ship to. That's just an example. And from this page, go to create market and we're gonna call this test. Let me just capitalize that one. I'm gonna call this test. And then, oh my, I'm having a, a mayor as the British would say. And then down here, we would add a condition. Let's just look for the United States. Click on that one, click done, save it. And it's gonna take us back to the markets and we're gonna just click on manage shipping. And we'll click on the first option again. And now we can go to add shipping zone and select the United States. We have the option of shipping to every single state in the US or we can choose a select few. And once you're settled with your zones, you click on done. And actually you need to set up a shipping zone name. So we'll call this test zone. And then underneath this, we just go to done. And from here we add a rate. So first off we can choose whether to use a flat rate or use a third party app to determine this for us. I'm just gonna show you how to do it manually. Down here, let's name this. So test rates. And then down here, you can either keep it free or choose whatever rate you want. For example, $3. And then you click done and there you go. That's all there is to it. If you wanna add more, click on add rate. But far as figuring out how to add zones and setting up rates for those zones, you know how to do it now. And the last thing I wanted to talk about in our settings is the domains. So right now our domain name is this up here. Of course, nobody's gonna wanna click on that. However, you also wanna have a good top level domain, which is uh, myshopify.com. So right now our domain name is this and then .myshopify.com. So what I highly recommend is buying a Shopify plan and then going ahead to buy a new domain so that your store looks reputable. All you gotta do is go to this section and then you'll have a bunch of different options available to choose from, which are much more reputable than .myshopify.com. And reason number 476 as to why you should buy, well, you have to buy a Shopify plan actually for this one, because to publish your store, you have to be able to remove this password that is imposed on you. So when you're using the free trial, you're gonna see this. And when you buy a plan, you're gonna see this, that your store is protected by a password, but you can actually remove it. And when you do remove it, it'll say your store is open to everyone and you can start selling things. And there you go, folks. That just about wraps up today's video. If you have any further questions for me, do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And again, don't forget about that free trial and deal for Shopify in the description below. At any rate, thank you all so much for watching as always. And until next time, make sure to take care.